This is King Karoos, the Black History Buff, and this is the Black History Buff podcast. First things first, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who supported me on Patreon. Without your support, I couldn't do any of this. Not only do your contributions help me to pay for all the costs it takes to produce my content and obtain research materials, the moral support and messages you regularly send have carried me through some really tough times. So thank you all. I'd also like to thank my faithful followers on Instagram. Despite numerous shadow bans and platform blocks, the Black History Buff IG Army has still managed to grow to over 45,000 people, which is just incredible. We post daily on Instagram, something I'm really proud of. And I've recently started to share some short videos too, which my beautiful son has begun to help me with. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you to you. Yes, you, the person listening to my voice right now. I've been away from the podcast scene for a while now, and I've really missed it. But juggling a full-time job, community work, my education, social media platforms, and a pandemic meant something had to give. And unfortunately, it meant I had to put the show on pause for a little while. But I'm back now, and to make sure I stay back, I'm going to be taking things slow and dropping shorter episodes until I get back into the flow of things again. And I'd like to kick things off with an incredible story about a man named Doris. So kick back and relax while I tell you the incredible story of Doris Miller, the hero of Pearl Harbor. Doris Dory Miller was born in Waco, Texas on October 12, 1919. The son of sharecroppers Connery and Henrietta Miller, at school, Doris became the star fullback and at home he helped to support his family by assisting with farming and working as a cook in a small restaurant during the Great Depression. Less than a month before his 20th birthday, Miller enlisted in the United States Navy at its Dallas recruiting station. Following training at a segregated boot camp in Norfolk, Virginia, he was assigned to the USS West Virginia as a mess man. During this time, black men were not allowed to be trained in or assigned to any other speciality. Their battle station was below decks in the hole or magazine, where they passed ammunition up to the gunners. Our story begins as Japan entered World War II on December 7th, 1941 by launching a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. The anchored West Virginia was nearly instantly taken out as hot lead rained down from the sky and torpedoes hit it from the water. Dory, who was below decks doing laundry when the first torpedo hit, launched straight into the action and headed to his battle station, the ship's artillery storage. He arrived to find it flooded. Keeping a cool head, he heads off to find reassignment, and on his way, he finds and carries the ship's commanding officer to safety on the main deck. By this time, the ship has been hit by two bombs and six torpedoes, is under fire from the air, and is both flooding and burning. In my mind, I have this image of that moment, of Dory, just standing on the main deck, and it's just burning. Men are running to and fro, the air is filled with sounds of planes and explosions and machine gun fire and it's total chaos. And I'm going to be honest, I think for me, at this point, it's abandoned ship. I'm not sure I would have done anything other than froze, but not Dory. Seeing the total cluster, f- I mean carnage, sprints across the deck of the burning ship, grabs a Browning anti-aircraft gun and opens fire on the Japanese bombers. I told you this was epic. Now Dory, who was completely untrained in handling this death dealing piece of machinery, managed to shoot down between 12 and eh, zero Japanese planes depending on which reports and articles you read. I'm still rooting for everybody black, so I'm going with 12. Doris didn't stop firing until he was out of ammo, the ship had begun to sink and his captain was pronounced dead. Only then did he begin to leave. As he descended the still burning and flooded ship onto the boat deck to make his way off, Dory still had the presence of mind to stop and help pull sailors from the now burning waters, saving even more lives. Dory was one of the last three men to get off the West Virginia, but his ordeal wasn't over. Once off the ship, he then had to swim 400 meters to shore through a sea riddled with burning oil fires whilst being shot at by Japanese planes. And once he did make it to shore, our hero Doris still took the time to help scores of injured men to land. And it's at this point I'd like to remind you that this was the 1940s and those people Doris saved were probably racist as hell. 
And that part's important because as a reward for his bravery under fire, Doris Miller was awarded the Navy Cross, the second highest decoration for valor in combat. The second highest. Second. And if you're wondering what he would have needed to do to get the highest, that's easy. All he would have needed to do to get the highest was be white. Following some Christmas leave in 1942, Miller reported to duty aboard the aircraft carrier Liscombe Bay as a mess attendant, this time first class. Miller died during the Battle of Gilbert Islands on November 24, 1943, as his ship was torpedoed and sunk in the Pacific Ocean. In addition to the Navy Cross, the Navy honoured Doris Miller by naming a dining hall, a barracks and a destroyer escort for him. The USS Miller is the third naval ship to be named after a black Navy man. Though tragic, Miller's death inspired all Americans and opened the doors for blacks in the Navy. Two months after his passing, the Navy opened an officer's training program at Camp Robert Smalls for black sailors and commissioned its first black officers on March 17th, 1944. I know not everybody is a lover of the armed forces, but the fact is, they exist. And we need to have representation in these spaces. Brave men like Dory Miller in the Navy and more modern examples like Venice Armory in the Air Force ensure that the interests of black men and women are present. And I for one am glad to know that there are people that look like me representing us in all facets of society. This has been King Caruse, the Black History Buff, and this has been the Black History Buff podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support the creation of more, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Until next time, stay safe and remember, black history is world history. This week on RVER, sponsored by Progressive Insurance. I'm sorry, I can't operate on that vehicle. But doctor, you took an oath. That RV, it's my son's RV. Oh, doctor, isn't there anything you can do? I'm not a miracle worker, Sheila. I'm an RV surgeon, trained to save the lives of large injured recreational vehicles, which is definitely a real profession. When your RV really needs saving, Progressive has you covered. See if you could save with a leader in RV insurance. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates covered subject to policy terms. You made it. Checked out of office to check into the sweet views of this place where the kids aren't asking for the Wi-Fi. Mom, can we go to the pool? And when you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it. 